and almost every estimate of a good tax reform would increase a lot of productivity in Brazil. And also, you need to create a framework to attract private investment infrastructure. Because Brazil has this very productive agricultural sector, but soybeans from, the, from Mato Grosso still come to the port in Santos by truck. In the US, of course, the private system does this. Union Pacific bring the same soybeans from, um, I don't know where soybeans are from here, probably that cold in Oklahoma, <laughs> Michigan, something like that. Anyway. Huh? Iowa. Iowa, Iowa yes. Yeah. <laughs> but Union Pacific, I, see, I know, brought, uh, brings them because they advertise on that. <laughs> Post election, we should, have this, uh, we should have a tax reform that brings simplification and eliminates right now in Brazil, and this is part of what was done during the Lula government, we have a system which is very good for people who have very small firms. And it's very difficult for people who have large firms. So the penalty for becoming larger and more efficient is enormous in Brazil. Now, I want to finish by saying this. Everybody looks at all those problems and says, well, everything is so difficult, there's lots of problems. And I want to remind you what, how Brazil became efficient on our great business. And I'll finish with that. Um, so first of all, we invest in R&D, and BRAPA did it, and that's what caused the so-called tropical agriculture, which just made, made Brazil so efficient in agriculture. Second, industry is deregulated. You, you don't, none of you have age to remember that, not even Al, probably. But <laughs> in 1990, that far away, okay, if you want to produce sugar, you need to have a license from the government. If you want to produce, sell coffee, you need a license from the government. If you want to import wheat, you need another license from the government. That was great. There were lots of licenses and so on. This was all getting away with, and we have become very, very... Now, so that caused the migration of producers and increase in scale of operations. Agriculture is one of the few sectors in Brazil that faces global competition. You produce sugar in Brazil without any subsidies. You produce ethanol in Brazil without any subsidies. And you produce sugar <coughs> in the United States with all those subsidies that they have. You produce soybeans in Brazil without any subsidies. And in Europe, you produce with lots of subsidies. So you can compete that way. And you had an enormous impro uh, improvement in total factor productivity in agribusiness, in spite of the ter terrible transport infrastructure, the difficult legal environment. You know, you, can, you may have a farm in the middle of Mato Grosso, and one day may be invaded, and it's very hard to get it back. And it's very expensive to use certain inputs in Brazil because of the protection to the industry. So tractors and machinery kind of expensive. In spite of that, we became very, very productive. So the message is a message that you don't have to do everything. You don't have to fix all the problems of Brazil. There's a lot of opportunities in Brazil, and there'll be enormous opportunities in Brazil. And we can grow. We can do what Korea did. We can do what Taiwan did. Grow at, at, at great, at, at large, and uh, at, at large steps. And um, without that, probably not much. Without solving all our problems. Thank you. No, I'm uh, not going to use a PowerPoint, and uh, as a result, I don't even have to go over there. Uh, I can stand up here. Uh, you've heard a number of presentations uh, which I think highlight uh, a number of the characteristics of the current election. Uh, what is uh, going to happen in the election. Uh, it seems to me that the election is important in Brazil precisely because it has the chance of bringing a third group to power. That in part what has happened in Brazil with every presidential election being the PT versus the uh, PSDB uh, is that uh, you've got two groups. The groups uh, are well defined. Uh, they have different positions, although the positions in fact are not that different. And uh, one of the things that's quite interesting is that uh, the positions of Serra and Lula in 2002 were not very different, in fact. Uh, uh, what has happened is you've got lots of people from the PT 
who now are in a number of the federal agencies. You've got them uh, in a number of the uh, states that are controlled by them. And in part, you created an enormous bureaucracy in Brazil. And in part, that is uh, the problem. You've had excessive uh, expenditure uh, that has resulted, and you've had, in many ways, deterioration in quality of uh, the administration. And that shows up a little bit in this whole question of uh, what you do, for example, uh, about industrial policy. Industrial policy was always emphasized uh, under the PT government. They were going to come in and they were going to deal with the problem of deindustrialization of Brazil. They were going to invest and create manufacturing and bring it up again to its glory days of the 1980s and uh, the 1970s, uh, and uh, that was going to happen. Uh, the circumstances facing Brazil today uh, are really very different. Uh, number one, uh, Brazil uh, has problems, uh, I think, with excessive corruption, which didn't show up earlier, but now seems to be present. Uh, and in part, uh, I think we see that in the case of Petrobras. Uh, we see that uh, with Paulo Roberto Costa and uh, all of the evidence that uh, he has apparently made available about what benefits were received by a number of politicians as well as others. Uh, and this goes against what the organization had been previously. Uh, there are a whole number of organizations in Brazil which are dependent on the government still uh, in terms of production of energy. Uh, there are uh, a variety of places in which the state remains important. And uh, that issue is best dealt with by having someone else than the PSDB or the PT. The second thing that I uh, want to uh, emphasize is uh, that there's a problem with the government deficit in Brazil. Uh, the government deficit in Brazil has managed to uh, continue to be present. Uh, the government deficit this year is probably running around 4% of GDP, uh, and that's much too high. What it reflects is uh, expenditures made by this large public machine. And uh, you're going to have to uh, deal with the problem in Brazil that you're benefiting the old at the expense of the young. You're really uh, winding up in circumstances where the old are getting pensions which are expanding in accordance with the minimum wage. They are a rising percentage of income. If you look at any comparison uh, of Brazil's expenditures, which are now about 12.5% uh, uh, of GDP, uh, you see Brazil way higher than comparable countries in terms of per capita income. Uh, that kind of circumstance means that you're taking away from the circumstance of uh, benefiting the uh, poor as well as benefiting the young. Uh, 
the ratio of expenditures on higher